Um, I should let you know that uh, it's been quite a day. I decided to uh, uh, go for a drive this morning along the ocean. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. I had a wonderful morning. I am in a great mood. And then to walk in this door and get all of that, let me give that back to you. <laughs> all right? Thank you, thank you, thank you. And just to let you know how much I really appreciate that, I tell you what, I'm going to invite you to take a trip with me. Let's make it maybe a trip uh, back in the past, down memory lane, etc. See if we can't put some things into perspective, right? As a matter of fact, good old United States, democracy, wonderful people, wonderful country. As a matter of fact, I think it would be good for us to make this drive and let's take a right turn and go by, let's say, maybe um, uh, the American melting pot, pot stop. I think that's the stop where all Americans just blended in together, culturally, wonderfully, held hands. They sang, come by ya, and we never had a problem. We all melted into the melting pot, right? You know, different ethnic and racial groups in this country, we've never been separated. We've never had any conflict. Bam, the American melting pot. As a matter of fact, let's take a left turn and maybe we can go down, let's say, uh, cultural uh, and let's say maybe something good, uh, something nice, let's take a drive. Tell you what, let me, uh, for this group, let me take out this. I think this might help me if I take this out. So we we'll really know where we're going, right, and what we're going to do. As a matter of fact, let me see. Uh, okay. All right, let's say cultural appreciation. Right, we have to drive down that lane, right? Wait a minute. Mary, is this the one on uh, civil rights or is this the one on come by ya? <laughs> civil rights? Oh, my goodness. Uh, uh, excuse me. Let's put this away. And let's, what? What? No symbolism here? I mean, uh, I confused my notebooks. Uh, let me see. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. Oh, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Now we are ready. And this group right here, okay. So in terms of uh, that drive that we are about to take, so I'm going to let the top back up on the car. <laughs> Take the sunglasses off and instead put your boots on and put your shoulder pads and your cleats on because it might get nasty up in here. If we're going to talk about, let's say, uh, the modern civil rights movement, or if we're going to talk about the civil rights movement then and now, when we look back, then doesn't look so good. As a matter of fact, why would we even need to have a civil rights movement? When you think about that, why a civil rights movement? Well, some, some things happen, some bad things happen. As a matter of fact, everybody's heard about the institution of black slavery over here. Eh, got started, let's say, in Virginia, the first colony, the first American colony, okay. Uh, that would go on to become the United States, of course. So when we start thinking about around 1640, 1650, I'm going to use 1660. From about 1660 to 1865, we had legalized black slavery in this country. Oh, okay, up until that time, blacks were pretty much the same as white indentured servants in Virginia. But around 1660 or so, we're going to legalize black slavery over here, and it's going to last for 205 years to 1865. Okay, what does that mean? What's the big deal? Do we need civil rights for that? Well, let's go one step further. So if we look at that, during that particular time period, 
I hate to tell you this, but black status declined from here all the way to there. All kinds of laws were passed to govern the conduct and behavior of black people and black society, which was a slave society. When you think about what happened, uh, consider this, some of the laws. i just give you a few. There were this many, I'll give you this many. There were laws that were passed that stated uh, it's against the law to pay a Negro for his labor, and that's his or her labor. That's against the law. Not one white man's opinion, but it's against the law. Going one step further, not only is that against the law, it's against the law for blacks to own property, to own any property. And the further south you got, the more uh, vehemently that they really felt about that. For example, uh, Alabama, Mississippi, and Georgia got so bad that they passed laws stating it's against the law for a black person to own even a dog. As a matter of fact, if any Negro is found guilty of such an offense, first of all, the dog is to be killed for its role in this offense. And the black person, given up to 39 lashes on his bare back, well laid on, and then fined up to $10. Wait a minute. What's that, a law about not paying black people? So I guess we would have to give him more lashes. So you had those laws. It's against the law to teach a black person to read and write. Hmm. Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, once again, said that it was against the law for blacks to make joyful noises in the streets. What you got business up and down the streets laughing and having fun? That's against the law. Hmm. If any Negro ever lifted his hand so as to strike a white person, he's to be put to death when? Immediately. Uh, if any Negro is found guilty of rape or attempted rape of a white woman, he's to be put to death when? The day before it happened. Or the, <laughs> or the day before she said that it happened. Right? Oh, whoa, it was terrible. It was rough. It was rough. But at any rate, many, many other laws. But let's fast forward, because we need to get to the end of the period of enslavement. When blacks can get rights, then lose them, then we're going to have a civil rights movement, right? So for 205 years, and let me waste my time so I can make sure we can squeeze everything in, right? So when you think about it, OK, so here we are 205 years later. Blacks are coming out of enslavement. Four million blacks are coming out into the Deep South. Whoa, wait a minute. Uh, now we're going from slavery to freedom? OK, in that case then, let me see. How much money did blacks have in the bank? Oh, no, oh, that's right, zero. OK, well, let's say, how much property did blacks have? OK, okay we'll say zero again. OK, OK, all right, you got me. Uh, but how much education? close to zero. Whew. Well, at least blacks were American citizens and they could rely on their citizenship. That's right, blacks weren't citizens. Hmm. Uh, you might want to go back to Dred Scott and you find all kinds of information about that, right? But moving right along, so in that case, all blacks had to do was exercise their vote so that they can get, what, representatives to look out for their, oh, that's right, blacks didn't have uh, the vote. Hmm, well, what rights did blacks have after 205 years of enslavement here? As a matter of fact, one might conclude zero. What kinds of material resources did blacks have? Uh, let's conclude about zero. And as a result of that, dire straits ahead for blacks. Oh, and that organization, that good old American organization was started in 1865, what was it? The, the Knights of, uh, oh, the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan, huh? Started in 1865. No protection for blacks, huh? Lynchings, burnings, castrations, you name it, you name it, you name it. As a result, whew, uh, more dire straits for blacks. So we say, okay, well, blacks, after 205 years of enslavement, coming out with virtually zero, 
and whites, after 205 years of enslaving blacks, came out and one, with one word, what would we say? Everything. Yeah, that's right, everything. Now we start freedom for black people in this United States democracy where you need tools and resources in order to be free and independent, truly, right? That was missing. But the federal government steps in, the federal government steps in, provides rights for blacks, 13th Amendment. You've probably been hearing quite a bit about the 13th lately, huh? The 13th Amendment, 1865 to 67. Not only that, the 14th Amendment, the 15th Amendment, the Freedmen's Bureau to provide emergency assistance for blacks, what, making the transition from slavery to freedom, et cetera, right? Whoa, so things are really looking up now. What about a civil rights bill? No, no, we're not gonna have a civil rights bill for blacks in 1866, are we? No, let's do it, a civil rights bill. Uh, read the fine print, it might say something relative to, uh, it's against the law for a state to discriminate against a person based on race. Say some other things as well, but let's leave it right there for the moment. So when we look at that and we say, wow, a civil rights bill, and I'm not talking about 1966, 1866, boy, things are looking up. Wait, what about those terrorist organizations like the Klan, terrorist organizations like the Knights of the White Camellias or the Knights of the Red Camellias? Whoa, my goodness, federal government stepped in. Okay, we had a Reconstruction Act. The South was divided into what? Uh, should we say five, what, military districts with federal troops stationed in each one? Let's authorize those troops to use force against terrorist organizations. Can we do it? We can? Bam! It was done. You probably know it as the Force Bill or the Enforcement Act, right? Boom, so things were really looking up. As a matter of fact, over the next 10 years, Black progress skyrocketed, went off the charts. Bam! 16 to 22 blacks elected to the United States Congress. Wow. Congress, not to eat, well, I almost said not the state legislatures, but they were elected to state legislatures as well. It was great, it was great, once wonderful. Blacks in the United States Congress, blacks, uh, let's say, in state legislatures, black mayors, black lieutenant governors, all kinds of elected posts. Boy, things were looking great. Until 1876, let's say, a presidential election, <laughs> not too unlike some of the ones we've had in recent years, as a matter of fact. But at any rate, big debate. Uh, 1876, Northern candidate Rutherford B. Hayes, Southern candidate Samuel J. Tilden. Oh my goodness, goodness, goodness. Whoa. Count the votes, the North declared in so many words that Hayes would be president. The South wanted to recount, declared Tilden to be the what, president. So and essentially we would have two presidents elect around this time. Nope, they didn't count dangling chads. <laughs> they didn't go to the Supreme Court. They decided to go behind the closed doors and work it out. They came up with the Compromise of 1877. Compromise of 1877, so here they decided, let's do this. Tell you what, Southerners, what would it take for you to recognize Hayes as president? You say, uh, okay, you want the federal troops pulled out of the South? But you know, we have the federal troops there doing all, you say pull them out, you support Hayes? Federal troops out, 1877. What else, what else? Okay, you want the president to appoint Southerners to his cabinet so he, you can have a voice at the highest level of government? <laughs> okay, okay, that's it. One more, uh, what else, <coughs> money? You want money? Lots of money, more money? Some might say today, more money? for reconstructing the South. You say bridges had been damaged during the Civil War. Not only bridges, but at the same time, we're looking at bridges, roads, churches, farms, cities, towns, everything. 
and Southerners were pissed. They had even lost a way of life, right? Who did they blame? Them damn Yankees and those blacks over there who they affectionately referred to from time to time as those niggas, et cetera, et cetera. It was rough. What? So now that the federal troops are out, okay, we're looking. Poll taxes are passed. Literacy cl uh, clauses are passed to try to stop blacks from voting. But wait, even though they were passed, not only did they do a job on blacks, but they did a job on many Southern whites who couldn't afford poor poll taxes or who couldn't read and write, et cetera, et cetera. That didn't work. Meantime, that Civil Rights Bill of 1866, let's declare it unconstitutional. We'll talk about details later, 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 some other time. All right, so that's gone. What can we do now to stop blacks from voting? I got it. Let's pass the grandfather clause. That would be a real good one, a grandfather clause, which will state that you cannot vote, blacks or anybody, you cannot vote unless your grandfather voted in the last presidential election before the Civil War, which was 1860, when blacks were, were all slaves. Did the uh, grandfather clause do a good, a, a good job on blacks? Yes. Did it stop them from voting? Yes, yes, yes. But it didn't stop there. We're going to get a Supreme Court decision, 1896. 1896, the Supreme Court decision says, hey, it's OK to separate blacks from whites. Yeah. Separate but equal. You probably know it, what? Uh, separate but equal. OK, et cetera, 1896, et cetera, Plessy v. Ferguson, all of that kind of good stuff. But boom, so now it's OK to separate black people. Southerner said, hmm, the Supreme Court says separate but equal is OK. I have an idea. Let's pass some separate laws. They're probably segregation laws. We're going to call them Jim Crow laws, right? Who, Jim, uh, any generic man? Uh, Crow, uh, black, black man, yeah, Jim Crow laws that will state the following, just a few of them. There were this many, I'll give you a few. It's against the law for a Negro to live in the same community with whites, against the law. It's against the law for a Negro to be buried in the same cemetery with whites. It's against the law for a black person to drink from the same water fountain with whites. It's against the law for a black person to attend the same schools with whites. It's against the law for a black person in court to swear an oath on the same Bible that a white person uses. Oh, well, in that case then, hey, we better stop there. I won't even let you know that it was against the law to store textbooks for black students in the same warehouse as textbooks for white students. Did it get ridiculous on, 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 and on? Yes, it did. It was very racist. It was very racist. I won't call it crazy. I'll say racist. But at any rate, that went on. That went on. Jim Crowism. Uh, let's say uh, the Supreme Court decision. Uh, let's say going from there, let's include, of course, the grandfather clause and everything else. Took rights away from blacks. Civil rights. Rights that blacks and anybody else would expect to have within a country. So when you start the next century, the 20th century, let's take 1901, how many blacks are left in Congress? Let's try zero, because blacks are unable to vote in the South, right? A job has been done. And on top of that, don't be surprised if when blacks came out of enslavement, after 205 years of enslavement, blacks, for the most part, were minimally 205 years behind white society in general. And that's not even talking about, you can see the scars of the economic scars in 1865. You can see, let's say, the uh, educational scars. You could see, uh, let's say, uh, property, but could you see the emotional scars for blacks? Could you see the psychological scars for blacks? But forget it. That's not important. Let's go on into the 20th, 20th century. And during that particular century, blacks will begin to organize 
for a civil rights movement. So you can fast forward through the Niagara Movement, the NAACP getting started, the National Urban League, CORE, USAM, scratch that, USAM is going to be coming in the 60s and 70s. But CORE and the Nation of Islam, whew, the UNIA, whoa, different black organizations during that second generation of black freedom. Blacks started making progress from here to here, to here, to here, and not because the federal government was behind it, but because the initiative and energy and engines of black society carry blacks that way. Whoa, tell you what, let's take time out and let's send and allow approximately, what, two million blacks plus to leave the South, to leave what, uh, uh, segregation, to leave, let's say, uh, uh, lynchings and other forms of terrorism and go north because now blacks are going to be able to start getting some rights together. You going north, can blacks vote in the north? Yes. Can blacks vote in the south? Basically, no. So blacks are going to start organizing in the north, different organizations, make all kinds of progress. We're going to have what? Uh, a civil rights movement just waiting to explode. So let's go to something like, hey, uh, let's take a look at uh, Emmett Teal, black boy, 14 years, years old, who gets killed, coming down from Chicago to vi visit relatives in uh, Mississippi, money Mississippi. Wow, did that shock the nation, especially when you saw the pictures, right? Or better yet, uh, let's go back to 1954, a year earlier, and let's talk about, let's say, uh, Brown versus Board of Education. Boy, we have a civil rights movement beginning to get off the ground because the civil rights uh, movement was all about initially trying to get the rights that blacks had lost at the end of the previous century. So yeah, so let's, uh, have, let's have a Brown versus Board of Education, the Emmett Till case. Oh my goodness, what about Bo Rosa Parks and Barcott and Buses in 1955, huh? Wow, boy, blacks were really coming together. It was sort of like a new day. And because of the numbers of blacks in the South, we aren't surprised that blacks really started organizing mass movements in the South in terms of the civil rights movement before they got it together in the North. Now be sure that before this time, uh, Marcus Garvey could get 20, 25,000 blacks and others in the streets like that. So we know that was going on. The, uh, the Nation of Islam was powerful, but at any rate, so boom, boom, that's the way it went down. We started getting a movement going with them, and before long, we're going to have the SCLC, we're going to have SNCC, we're going to have NOW, Neighborhood Organized Workers, we're going to have USAM, we're going to have CORE. Whew. Wow, progress, progress, progress. And we're going to go from, hey, uh, talking about nonviolence, and talking about love your enemy and turn another cheek, we're going to turn and talk about, hey, protecting the black community. Blacks have rights to protect themselves. Blacks can organize to uh, develop their own forces in the community, provide your own schools, provide your whatever you need, you can organize to do it. Boy, things were really, really moving forward. As a matter of fact, I'm black and I'm proud. Yeah, uh, wait, wait, hey, wait, what did you say over there? Did I hear somebody say, oh, we shall overcome. Oh, I got you, I hear you. Uh, did, I, did I hear somebody back there say black power? White yourself, etc." cetera. Things getting out of hand around here. Let's call in the FBI on this one. Biggie, huh? Biggie, biggie, biggie. Uh, FBI came in doing its thing and did everything that it could to destroy the movement, but it couldn't destroy a people's movement. When we, and before we leave, I'm going to indicate that, bam, we have a people's movement budding right now, huh? Talk about that in a couple of minutes. But at any rate, so the FBI did its thing. The CIA did its thing. And on top of that, blacks made steady progress. Where was I at that particular time? Where was I? Oh, that's right, I was born in Mobile, Alabama, in the Deep South. 
the civil rights movement was exploding all around me. I didn't need to ask what it was about. I didn't have a choice of whether I could get involved or should get involved or not. My teachers from this grade, I lived in a segregated black community, went to a segregated black school, but I was fortunate in that the school that I went to was a very good one. So when I went through, I had courses in chemistry, trigonometry, calculus, you name it, you name it, you name it, all anatomy, biology, whatever, so I did pretty good. And guys in my neighborhood who attended that school did pretty good. We had, we've had college presidents to come out of that, as well as doctors, lawyers, on and on and on. But with me, did I get involved in the civil rights movement? Maybe you've heard about uh, the Selma to uh, Montgomery March. Yeah, I was there. As a matter of fact, I was a student at Alabama State College in uh, uh, Montgomery, right? And the way SNCC would always get us out there uh, demonstrating and protesting and raising hell, once they're over here in this part of the state and blacks get beaten, et cetera, then they parade them through our campus. Might come through around 10 a.m., put up a little black boy here on this uh, post and let's say he's about maybe four years old, five years old, he's bruised up, been beaten, and they put him up there and say, now tell the people what happened to you, tell them. And the white people beat me up, I want my rights. I said, damn, you know, I said, fuck them. I said, yes, I'm, part, I'm marching, yes, yes, and yes. Brothers and sisters all around me, yes, yes, yes. So we immediately could pull together 2,500 students who are going to march on Governor Wallace at that particular time. Yeah, because, you know, we didn't like him anyway. He had a habit of standing in front of doors and, and stuff, you know, so we didn't like him. That's another, that's a long story. But at any rate, so uh, on one occasion before that particular march, uh, SNCC had come through, everybody had been beating up who they had, and they said, look here, we are going to exercise our rights tomorrow. We're going to what? Uh, march on Governor Wallace. So meet tomorrow at 10 a.m. in the stadium. Next morning, I put on my finest, you know, got clean, put my favorite outfit on, got my jewelry together, mm -hmm, I'm ready, et cetera. All right, let's go. I'm going. I'm in the stadium. I'm waiting for them, to, the same guys, to come around who came around yesterday. And it's a different group of guys. These guys have beards on down to here. They have on helmets. They have on fatigue, fatigue, what, fatigues. They have on programs, etc. I said, damn, they look like they're going to war. And I didn't know that they were. <laughs> they were going. And here I am, you know, doing my thing, right? So they said, okay. Let's go, we're going to march from the stadium uh, to the Capitol. But they marched maybe about past two buildings. They said, there are too many brothers and sisters inside who don't understand what this movement is about. Let's march through the buildings where they're having classrooms and let's sing, we shall overcome as well as, as, well as others and disrupt class, everybody will come out. That happened, so now we have about 3,500 students who are marching down the main street, one block from campus, two blocks from campus. I'm pretty much about uh, maybe a, a third of the way back. We get up to the second block, two police cars come from that way. Two police cars come from that way. And uh, four policemen jump out the car there, four jump out from there. And we stop and snake represented to say, okay, we are going through. We're going to exercise our rights. We're on the sidewalk. We're going through. And the policemen hop in the cars and take off. We go, yes, yes. And I'm going, I'm going, yes, we got this. We got this. One more block, 10 police cars come from that corner, that direction. 10 come from that direction. A posse come from that direction with horses. And I say, oh, blank. And I said, oh, I'm back here. The front line is uh, about here, and we're in groups of twos or threes, right? So I'm about right here. So SNCC representatives say, we have rights. We are going through. As a matter of fact, 
come out of your lines, everybody piling to the, to the uh, street. Come on. They started pushing, pushing. I said, what the, pushing, pushing. And I'm here on the front line. I'm saying, oh, blank the blank. <laughs> and a policeman standing like this, strapping their helmets on, getting their batons together. I said, oh, blank, he's going to knock the blank out of me. Blank the blank the blank. What am I doing here? Why did I bring my blank up here anyway? I would run, but everybody would see me because I'm on the front row, right? So I said, I said, Snick started passing the word. The announcement came. You have five minutes to disperse. Four minutes. Three minutes. They started getting ready and everything, passing batons out from the car, et cetera. I said, oh, Lord. And I wasn't one for praying. So I'm praying and everything, blah, 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 blah. One minute before they got to a zero, a television truck wheels around the corner, a reporter's on top of the truck with the cameras taking pictures. Snake representatives say, don't worry, they aren't going to do anything. We'll be on TV. They aren't going to do anything. So I said, Phew. I'm on the front row, and they had the cameras panning this way. I was right there. I was like this. Oh, Lord. I saw the cameras coming. I went, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> et cetera. They passed by. I went, Sheesh. All right. So at any rate, quickly, what you're going to find is that uh, I was there for 10 minutes, 20, an hour, two hours, three hours. 3,500 people were behind us at Initially, I looked back around, oh, it was 1,500. I said, okay. I stayed another couple of hours. I looked back around, oh, about 500. I said, if it gets any smaller, <laughs> they can wipe us out. I said, they probably went to have lunch. I was hungry, so I turned around and went to have lunch as well. Came back that night, 50 of 55 brothers and sisters were sitting in the street. The posse was there. I had my lady with me, so we were BSing. We walked up having a good time. I'm seeing my partners, frat brothers. Hey, what's up? What up? And she snatches my horn. I said, what's Then she said, and I looked this way, and about 38 to 40 possum men are riding this way, straight to it to students who are sitting in the streets. And in those days, as in today, black historically black colleges are pretty much situated in black neighborhoods. So people, well, black people were sitting on their porches in their rocking chairs and whatever, and we were, they were in the street. She snatches me, I look up, and <laughs> she, was, no, she was on this side because I quickly stepped to this side and I didn't remember what, which way she went because, hey, the car, they, you, you can't talk to a horse. All right, so I decided to run this way and some of the brothers uh, on that side, on the building, were throwing bottles down at the uh, uh, possum, and, and I was running this way. I decided to stop and pick up a rock or a brick to throw, and a brother was running so fast, he stepped on my hand, and I thought it was a horse, so I dove up under the house. <sighs> it was tragic. The next morning, even though they rode horses over students, front page in the newspaper, the, the major newspaper, uh, black students attacked possum uh, who tried to clear the way for an emergency ambulance to come through. BS, BS, BS. Six officers uh, injured. Nothing about uh, the black students with internal bleeding or whatever. Let me say one, one word about today. So in terms of a black movement today, and let me make sure that I sort of pull this out. Okay since we have the right book here. <clears throat> uh, when we start talking about the black movement today, uh, it's a different type of movement. And when you start talking specifics, uh, let's say uh, that blacks in the struggle today is so different. Yesterday, it was all about desegregation. It was all about voting rights. Uh, uh, educational opportunity, uh, jobs, you name it, you name it. Today it's uh, more complicated because 
blacks won that battle and got civil rights bills for 64, 65, and 68. And as a result, we had won. The movement was out in the streets, and we took it to them, and we won all of that, all of those rights. Today, it's different, more complicated. Uh, today, if someone discriminates against you, your battle is in the courtroom. Take them to court. Oh, if someone discriminates against you, sue them. Not only sue them, uh, but protest, et cetera, et cetera. No, don't protest. Go and vote. So vote at the courthouse today. And not only that, times have changed. So we aren't uh, into segregation today and desegregation because we figured out a long time ago that blacks should be able to remain in their own communities and have quality schools and uh, quality policing and et cetera. But it's complicated in the sense that today we're going to talk about a movement that's going to involve Black Lives Matter today. So that's major. We're going to talk about that. At the same time, not only are we going to look at Black Lives Matter, but we're also going to look at, let's say, uh, the movement uh, becoming broadened to uh, include, uh, let's say, uh, let me see here, uh, let's say black rights, brown rights, gay rights, women's rights, gender rights, ageism rights, parent, parents' rights, children's rights, whew, rights for the handicapped, immigration, citizenship rights, economic equality, uh, the Women's March uh, in, uh, on Washington, as well as others. Point being, the civil rights movement itself has evolved into a people's right, mo rights movement today. And as such, blacks, browns, others have come together in coalitions, and we are finding that much can be done that way. And at this point, uh, we're going to have to say goodbye. Sorry that I came at the time that I did. Uh, do we have time for one burning question? One burning question? No, you say you don't have time, you're still eating, and you have to go to class and everything, <laughs> et cetera. Mary. Uh, Thank you, Dr. I think the message to the students here today is to activate, right? To activate, and whether it's to voting or marching, if you're seeing some injustice, then stand up, because now is the time to invoke that spirit, right? Now is the time. And we have lots of forums on campus. Yes? Um, I have a question. Have you heard about what's going on in Sandy Hall? Okay, I couldn't hear you clearly. Yes, I have. What do I think about it? Okay. Uh, I, as a matter of fact, uh, I participated in a trillion different uh, protest movements, protests, demonstrations, etc. because I believe in that and I feel that one way to get action is to get attention and draw attention to your plight, your movement, whatever your objectives are. Anytime you start talking about Native Americans in this country and talking about uh, virtual genocide, talking about what has happened in the past, what's going on now, I'm going to say that, hey, to me, I'm going to want to appreciate uh, hollowed grounds. I'm going to want to appreciate water that I don't want to, uh, let's say, disdain with poisons of any kind. And I would say, so, uh, stand your ground do your thing, get as much attention as you can, but there are so many movements out there. You can't be everywhere, I can't be everywhere, so choose your own battles, but battle. Come, out, come down out the bleachers and get in the game, you can't score any points in the bleachers, right? And on top of that, believe it or not, it will make a difference. And we, I can't go into all the details because not only do we have classes here, I have one that's waiting as well, and uh, so, so I need to get out of here, but I thank you for your patience, and I appreciate you. <laughs>